Witamy serdecznie. Chcielibyśmy Państwa zaprosić na wykład z cyklu Mistrzowie Architektury SARP. Wykład odbędzie się online u nas na naszym kanale YouTube Masters of Architecture, a naszym gościem będzie Wolf Prix z firmy architektonicznej Kop Himen Blau. Zapraszamy. Zapraszamy i może przejdziemy od razu na język angielski. Hello, welcome. We are very happy to see all of you here. And we are also very happy to introduce you our uh, today's uh, guest, uh, which is uh, Wolf uh, Briggs from Kop Himmelblau. My name is Wojciech Fudala, and this is Justyna Boduch. Hello. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we would like to encourage you to uh, follow our social media channels. Uh, Masters of Architecture series of lectures is the biggest series of lectures in Poland. Uh, it takes place a uh, few times a year, but now because of the pandemic, we had to move all our lectures uh, online. But uh, on the other hand, it gives us a possibility of uh, organizing lectures in, in such a way that Wolf Prix can be together with us in a virtual way, staying in his own home in uh, Vienna. So Wolf Prix is a uh, CEO and uh, co-founder of Kop Himmelblau. He's also one of the creators of deconstructivism. So he created this style together with such architects like Zaha Hadid, Daniel Libeskind or Frank Gehry. Um, if you would like to know uh, more about it, we invite you to watch our lecture. We also encourage you to ask uh, questions. You can write uh, all your questions in the comments because uh, after Mr. Prix's speech, we'll have some time for the questions and answers part. So uh, after the lecture, we will read your questions to our guest and uh, he will uh, answer them. So you can write your questions uh, during all the lecture. We'll uh, be during Mr. Prix's speech, we'll be reading them. And then after the lecture, we will read it to our guest lecturer. So can we start? <laughs> can you see me? Yes. Because I can't see you, and uh, the acoustics are okay. Yeah, but everything was properly. So uh, okay. So once again, we are moving uh, to Vienna. So directly from Vienna, we would like to introduce you our guest, a great architect from great office, Mr. Wolf Dieter Prix. Okay. <laughs> Can I start? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, the lecture will have three parts. The first part is uh, there are some statements to understand why we are doing architecture we are doing. The second part is to make kind of philosophy about our design process and the, uh, which is called from decon to um, artificial intelligence, AI, and the th third part is showing some projects which we developed in the last couple of years. So I start with statement, yeah, I start with statement. Now, yeah. our society, now, our uh, the whole society, society of the, uh, the whole society, uh, we are living on a very uh, we are living on a very ground. uncertain ground. Nothing is ground. for sure. Nothing is for nothing, sure. Uh, is nothing uh, uh, is going into uh, directions. Uh, going into but directions. But you can see. But what can you see my see? arrow? Here? Can you see my arrow? Can you see that here? Can you see that? Yeah, it's visible on the screen. Yeah, it's visible yeah, yeah. on the screen. Okay, these yeah, yeah. are okay. Uh, we are living on a very uncertain uh, ground. We are living on a very uncertain and ground. And the old structures and the old are going to die. But are they are not die. dead. But already. they are not dead but already. Like all but dying, uh, like all dying uh, these structures. Um, these structures uh, are um, building a uh, the last building a power. The last in order to power die. in order to for the dark. In order to get away uh, from uh, dying. Get away from dying. Old I, structures and these old I would structures, say they are I would the right say wing comes up with the right wing in, in politics and in architecture. Politics and in architecture. To, to make the try to great to make again. attempts at <laughs> great again. <Yeah>. For the <laughs> but yeah. we, we, but we have we, the chance. 
have the because chance the new, because the uh, new structure uh, structure the forms the organization are not forms, they're coming up are but they are they're coming up yet. but they are not born yet and we have the chance by trying to experiment with all our knowledge we have the chance to influence the upcoming structures very heavily i think this is a big chance for the generation now because we can really direct the next future if we are ready to do so i have to say that um, uh, sustainability is not a one liner it's a three dimensional structure the first is ecology the second one is economy and the third one is the social uh, uh, direction which in, uh, and art and culture is implanted in, in this social uh, hold on a second okay hold on a second don't worry yeah, that's how we work from our homes during the yeah, pandemic. This is home office. <laughs> the kids are running around. Yes, so anyway, so the third direction is um, the social one, which is art and culture is embedded in this uh, direction. I have to say, the Green Party is only looking for ecology. The let's say the conservative parties are only going for economy and no one of these two parts are looking for the third one the cultural and the social one so we have to watch out when people are talking about um, uh, um, and therefore we say we will not allow art to be exiled from architecture you know, nowadays architecture, and you will see it later, people are only talking about um, priorities like uh, feasibility, like um, uh, optimizing and reorganizing stupid things. And the most important sentence, which is in our minds since 1968, the sentence which describes open society, namely, everybody is right, but nothing, really nothing is correct. So if someone says he knows how to go and the way should be, this is an autocratic attitude we have to reject. And a very important thing is that we say that a building only becomes architecture if it reaches the met, uh, meta level in form, gestalt, content, construction or material. If the building doesn't reach one of these things, then it's just a building. Coop Himmelblau was founded in 1968, almost five, five, uh, 53 years ago, and this was the time when the greatest paradigm change was announced by the photograph of our world from the out, uh, outer space. This picture of our world was the first time people could see our blue planet from a point we have never uh, be able to see this uh, our earth before so if you think that and this was a big challenge for us because changing the paradigms was a very important point of departure when we started our office himmelblau means sky blue but by erasing when we started to build we didn't build a long time uh, uh, 
mostly uh, uh, 10, 15 years um, after we started uh, to open our office. Uh, Himmelblau means sky blue. And when we started to build, we changed our name by putting the L uh, into parentheses, uh, uh, changing the name blue into building, blau into bau, which means we Himmel bau. From then on, we called ourselves Himmel bau. Mm -hmm. um, you know. The most noble goal for an architect is to finish the Tower of Babel. This is many reasons that that's not so easy. In a, uh, in a traditional thing, it will never happen. But in the metaphoric thing, it's the goal for every building you're doing. When we started our office, we wanted to change architecture radically, immediately, and uh, develop a new kind of language in architecture. Uh, we figured out that's not that easy to finish the Tower of Babel, so we started to, to build the detail, the cloud. The cloud was a pneumatic environment with movable platform in order to install different uh, space situation um, every time you want to do that. And the main material of this building is air. Only a thin foley uh, around these movable platforms created the, the transparent uh, wall to the outside. Since then, we did a lot of building.
So. It's hard to sit on the lecture if there is such background music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, the, the, it's the song from the Rolling Stones and it's called Timmy Shelter. Yeah, we know that very famous song in the history of music. Uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, conceptual piece. I could do a lecture about this piece as well, but I'm talking now about architecture. People always ask me, and now, what is architecture? And the answer is quite clear and complex. The answer is yes. So, if we, if we talk about architecture nowadays, we are only talking, this is an iceberg, we are only talking about the visible part of architecture. There's a lot of theories, blah, 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 talking about, you know, the, 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 the people, the theoretical guys and the critics and all these guys and the, the moderators are talking about only about this visible part. But we know since the Titanic that the invisible part is the much more dangerous part of architecture, namely politics, economy, ecology, um, rules and regulation, norms, taste, and so forth. All these things are influencing, whether you want it or not, influencing architecture. And you have to be very, very aware of all this stream which tries to influence the idea of space, in the worst thing, it's uh, the client tried to prohibit things which create space in order to save money, they say. But if you look at the pyramids, everyone says this is architecture. Yeah, this is the greatest architecture. But look at the program, look at the function. So the black part is the architecture and the white part is the function. If you come to a developer nowadays and you tell them, okay, we build you a pyramid, and this, this is your function you ask for, but this is architecture, I think you will get rid of your commission immediately. Why? Because this is the game. The client brief is always, build me a pyramid. But if you look close, this is the client, the budget, there is no tiger anymore, it's a street cat and a street boy and not an elegant young boy. We architects, we are, we are many, like a sardine swarm in a shark pool, so to say, but the, scenes, the, the sardines have um, the swarm intelligence but the architects don't have swarm intelligence. And I have to say, we are like uh, lemmings on the track, uh, jumping over the cliff. And I have to say, in this case, I don't want to be uh, the, in the first row of the lemmings. Complex systems, our world is very complex. It's not uh, difficult, it's complex. Much more deeper, um, uh, you can describe it by uh, comparing with, with our bra brain. Complex systems have complex problems, but complex problems you only can solve with complex solutions. Never ever uh, a simple solution is a new solution. Look at this Stone Age hunter. He is following the track of the, of the deer in the desert sun. How easy it is compared uh, to your way through the airport when you have to find the right gate at the right time and the plane who brings you there to the right uh, place. 
public and private space is one of the biggest issue right now in the city planning uh, procedure. So, how do we com <laughs> communicate right, uh, we right now? We have the hand we in have the hand instead, of, hand instead of, of talking to people, talking to people looking at their looking eyes, at their eyes using, using the media, the, 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 the mobile phone, mobile phone or, or this stupid uh, lecture medium. I cannot see you. Uh, this is annoying, I have to say, and I hate to do so, but since I, I like Poland very much, I decided to do so. The, you know, this, this painting, Michelangelo's painting in the Sixteen Chapel? Of course you have to know it. Yeah. How, would, how would he paint it nowadays? This way? Oh. I, I would say he would paint it that way, yeah. And on the right side, uh, we are replaced by a machine and this is Google. Uh, and Apple and all these big companies are uh, directing us. Yeah, one of our goal is of uh, our goal in architecture is to get rid of the gravity. I think I, I hate columns, and uh, since the since the the medieval times. And the Gothic churches, uh, the architects always want to overcome gravity. And if you compare the, the lying on Corbusier's chair with the lying, with the lying of the astronauts in the space capsule, um, in order to overcome gravity, they have the same position, not by chance. And since we are moving into the outer space, I have to say, and, and there is no gravity, of course, uh, uh, I have to say the monocentric perspective issue is obsolete. Now I come to the, um, uh, the, the secret of our designing methods. This reads in nur zwei Tagen is morgen, gestern, this reads in English like that, in only two days, tomorrow is yesterday. It's a very important thing in order to get rid of all these uh, uh, refines and um, all these borderlines. And I think uh, what I like in this English uh, expression, pushing the envelope, um, is that it shows that we have to go go on. If you stand still, you are dead. We thought we have to find a method in the architectural design process which allows us to liberate space. And we said, what is the weakest part? The weakest part in the process of creating architecture where we can put our sticks on in order to change the direction of the regular traditional thinking. I have to say when we were young architects, we were not interested in architecture. We said if you only think in architectural terms, only architecture will come out. And the postmodern movement was the example for that. The, the, the postmodern architects, the POMO architects, only were thinking in architectural terms, quoting Alberti and, and, and all these Renaissance uh, people. We said we have to get rid of that all. And we have to concentrate uh, the moment of designing uh, to create, uh, in order to get an explosive. Um, explosive, uh, um, uh, explosive moment where you don't think on rules and regulation, economy, and uh, other stupid priorities. If we can, we have to talk about the project. We we can discuss it, 
but never thinking on, on uh, spatial consequences. And if we use the, the, the pencil as the seismograph in order to make a psychogram of the upcoming space, maybe there is the chance that we can liberate and investigate a new kind of space. It's similar to a jumping whale. The whale is changing the paradigm from deep water into air. And at this moment, when it changes this media, uh, 30 tons can fly. So when we got a commission to do a house in California, we were talking about Helmut and me, and my former partner, we were talking about that long time, but never thinking about spatial consequences. But there was a moment, I remember this moment very well. And I have to say, this procedure I describe now is a very deconstructivist procedure related to surrealism and to all the and, and, um, cubism, all these art uh, methods. Uh, we were talking about this, uh, the upcoming house, very long time because we didn't want to design a house with all the details in terms of uh, doorknobs and, and all the things. And one day I remember it very clearly, the sun was shining on my table. I had the feeling I can see or I can feel the house. And I closed the eyes in order not to be led astray from the, from the drawing, my, my art of drawing. I closed the eyes and used the pen as a seismograph of the whole thing. At the same moment, uh, there was a model, very small model. This is like a matchbox. And we thought, okay, this we have. Well, I didn't like it, I have to say, as it, because it was not a house in conventional terms. But I said, okay, we have, to, uh, we have to develop that and see what it does. It's ugly enough that I could see there is the potential of a new language. This is 1980, almost 40 years ago. And we started to measure this model with a scale and translate it to a building by drawing plans and, um, and sections. And if you overlay these plans with the uh, original drawing, you can see that the energy lines are taken uh, into consideration in order to create the space and to create a volume uh, to create a volume like a landscape where the, the client could walk around after it's finished and decide where he wants to sleep, where he wants to live and where he wants to read uh, and to cook. And the construction was a, is a very complex construction. If I go back, I can explain it. The house is sitting on a wall only on one point. And these columns here are not columns, they are tension line in order not to uh, let the box falling down from the wall. And the, our structural engineer said, okay, um, uh, that's uh, not enough. We need, we need another column. Why don't we make these uh, stairs to the box up in the first level? Uh, make the stair door column. But it turns out if you do that, the, all the power uh, of, the, of the whole house is going into this column, which uh, would have been one meter thick concrete column. So we decided to uh, not to do it and make a, a movable column as you can see it here, a yeah. movable column. So at this force is the, the, the force is going, uh, the power and the force is going back to this tension loads here. 
And I have to say, since then, I don't like columns because columns are always symbols for pressure. Tension is a symbol for dynamics. So, by, by the, 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 the rooftop was done like this, which was the first deconstructivist thing, and I have to, the same method, and I have to clarify what decon is. Decon is not a game of uh, composition. It's the dealing with subconscious influences in your, uh, in your brain. So, uh, the misunderstanding of deconstructivism is that people always say, okay, they, they, they break uh, the, the forms and and, and then they put it together in a different way. That's not correct. Uh, Derrida, who was um, close to Freud, was also working with the subconscious thing, and there is the, the saying that the blind spot of every text, which was written, the blind spot, unconsciously, or a painting, a detail of the painting, which was painted unconsciously by the painter, is ruling the whole text. So this is the open house and the rooftop, um, I don't show you yet, the rooftop is uh, the first de really deconstructivist building, actually, uh, we did. Then I got to know from a sci science magazine that in LA there is a movie studio who can uh, uh, duplicate a statue like the Nofrutiti with a space arm. So I went to uh, uh, LA and asked Frank uh, whether he knows that. And said, of course, it's next to me. And what I did, I bought this space arm, uh, uh, brought it back to Vienna, and, and, and then we opened an uh, office in LA. And the Groningen Museum was done in this way, that we did a model, uncontrolled, seemingly uncontrolled model, and then we 3D plans, and then we built it, not in a building, uh, by a builder, but in a shipyard. Uh, BMW, uh, was uh, is not a, a car selling thing, but it's more a, a public space where you can uh, buy and, and and order a car. It's a public space uh, connecting a subway station with the main center of uh, uh, BMW, and actually this was planned by a former teacher of mine, Karl Schwanzer, and uh, it was, uh, we created, so to say, the third part of this ensemble, a uh, um, um, four-cylinder here, a cup, uh, like the museum here, and a double cone for the so-called BMW world. The double cone, which was, so to say, the entry idea, um, was uh, delivered actually by the, you can see that here, uh, was delivered by the idea of dynamic forces, which the uh, BMW uh, car company always says that they are the dynamic driving, driving car. And by there was no differentiation in this big space, um, only by uh, sculpturing the roof, uh, we could uh, create a different, uh, different space situation. They calculated when they started uh, to build it, they calculated with 800 people a year uh, visitors, now they have three millions looks different from every side because it's not a compositional space. 
it's ebb it's bay, it's, um, it's a, a liberated space. And uh, when we started, I wanted to have, uh, this is the, the delivery, you can pick uh, the delivery space where you can pick up uh, the BMW just bought. And I wanted to have it in a, a level higher and that curving through the whole space. And the people said, we can't do that because the client is so nervous. He, uh, we are happy if we can drive down one curve. The biggest uh, project in uh, Germany up to now is uh, the um, headquarters of the European Central Bank, which is supposed to be, for me, it's supposed to be a three-dimensional sign for the European Union. At this time, the European Union was still uh, uh, idle. Now there are a lot of people who, who hate that, which is very, very, very stupid for our future. So, um, I cannot show plans because uh, it's not allowed because of security, but there was an old um, um, train station uh, we remodeled and the, uh, the, the program says that we have to create um, offices for 3,000 people and combine the old with the new um, area. So we created in the old um, um, space in the Großmarkthalle, so to say, a public space. In the other part, we have semi-public space and in the tower with the atrium. Actually, there are three towers, two uh, office towers and one atrium tower. Uh, we uh, created the, the symbol for the European Central Bank. And why it's so uh, impressive or um, the presence of the, of the powers are very impressive because what we did, this is the program we had to handle with, uh, functional not, not uh, possible because of the light situation. So we cut the whole things in a curved cut, as you can see. And then we put the cut to the outside. So that creates a very unique shape, a curved outside with the solid inside where there is the third tower of the atrium. You can see it here loud and clearly. Why did we curve it? First of all, that gives us the possibility to create a bigger view uh, in the north and the south for the offices in the separated tower and that we can have in the, uh, even the sun in the north tower. The next step in high rises would be to create a vertical city. This is a project for Melbourne, uh, um, Beluga city, we call it, with a public space at the base, hotels, offices, and living uh, apartments. Looks like that, very lively. As you can see, there are green parks and districts and this is a very lively inside, which is actually a public space.
I hope you saw the kangaroo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we can do smaller things as well. This is a very small chapel in my hometown. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, interesting is how we develop the shape of this uh, roof, um, which comes, of course, as a reference from uh, Corbusier. We took the curve of the medieval bone house and changed it and used it in order to get a new thing. But by making a computer model, then we did a, a three, not a 3D model, a physical model, and worked with hand on it. And so the shape becomes a gestalt. And we did it in a, in a shipyard in Germany. It was transported to, um, to this small town. And the roof was lifted up, uh, was welded together because it was separated, welded together, and it was put on the base. <laughs> <laughs> Stairways to heaven. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is the old uh, church tower from the uh, old church, and this is the tower for the new church. And the interesting part is how we did it. We did everything on the computer, then we made it remodel it by hand and back to the computer. But in order to build it and get the sharp edges, we used a, a medieval building method by raw. And you can see that we can sculpture it more efficiently than we, than we would have done it with concrete. Where does it come from? Look at this, Mies van der Rohe. Mies van der Rohe, a wall and a ceiling, very stupid, very stupid move. Corbusier did it much more intelligent. He introduced a joint of light. Of course, these are the references, because when I was a student and I came to see this, it was not finished at this time. In 1974, uh, 1964, I said, if this is architecture, I, want to, I really want to make it. I want to be an architect. So the difference is, this is the Corbusier thing, but our light tubes are uh, penetrating the ceiling and uh, uh, sculpture the inside of the roof as well, as you can see here. Even the, the table, the altar, was done in the same geometry. The, before we go into China, the last thing we did in Austria, this is a museum for bread. When a client, uh, the client who has a factory, bread factory uh, in Austria came to us and said, I have so many things which are connected to bread, like status and things like that. I want to have a museum. I said, okay, we can do that. Look, I, and I was drawing this uh, after talking to him. Uh, I was drawing to that and say, okay, you have to have a wunderkammer. A wunderkammer, maybe you know it. Yeah, every every architect should know what a wunderkammer is. A lot of things which are different, not an art museum. It's the point of departure for an art museum. But as you can see, there are a lot of different things hanging laying on the floor and things like that. And I said, okay, we can do that. And this is the other reference. It's the stair of the Guggenheim of Frank Lloyd Wright and Catalan's installation in this, uh, in this museum in uh, 
the Guggenheim. It, it was a vertical, um, uh, vertical uh, exhibition, which was good for us because we didn't have space enough to um, hang or stand all the uh, things uh, we, uh, we, um, the client wants to exhibit. This is the next step in our method. We doing models and translate it via uh, the physical uh, model via a scan into the computer and then we work on it. And this is how we found the shape of the cloud. And it was built in wood. The, the, the table, the, the, the base was concrete, but the cloud was built in wood. CNN uh, phrase and cutter uh, was connected to, to uh, the computer and so forth. So they did it like that. And inside it looks very, very, uh, how should I say, like the Achenoa. And because the things he is exhibiting, yeah, very old um, uh, mummies from, from Egypt, the corn mummies, it's, it's a kind of Akinoa uh, for the, our, our life, namely uh, food, namely bread. You can see a lot of things, different things, hanging and standing and the building was, look, this is the client, the best client we had. He was so, this is next to his factory, he every evening, I could, we could see him via camera that, that he was walking around looking at his museum and he even was controlling everything. It was fantastic. And this is Paneum. Here you can see him in a, a white suit like the baker is doing it. And now we are in Lyon. Lyon is a museum, natural history museum. And the concept was because it was on a peninsula um, uh, where two rivers coming together, the Soan and the Rhone, we decided to lift up the museum. So if you come from the city, you don't have that the museum doesn't block the way to the nature, to the park, uh, where the two uh, rivers come together. So people can walk under the, 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 the building from coming from the city, or they can walk through the uh, uh, museum to the park. This is the concept. And of course, because the two rivers coming together creates turbulences. So we studied turbulences because the dynamic of turbulences, uh, we thought, is uh, the, the point of departure of a new modern uh, natural history museum. Uh, what we always do, and this is not by chance that I show it to you, we are always doing a model of the program in order to decide how the shape is connecting with the program. And I have to say, these are always physical models because architecture is a three-dimensional model, uh, language, and you have to uh, talk in three dimension in order to understand it. And therefore, as a model of the computer is suppressing the third dimension and the fourth dimension, namely time, by walking through or touching the model, is suppressing that in the second, uh, in, only two, uh, in only two dimensions. So the turbulence we created uh, by, by the experiment, we built it, so to say, and you can see that this turbulence is a column, but the column is not, um, it's a, uh, also tension, takes tension, and, and that uh, saves us one third of the budget because it is a very intelligent structure done by my friend, our friend uh, Klaus Bollinger, Bollinger and Grohmann, a structural engineering company from Germany, 
and I know him since years, and we always do the, the most exciting things together. Uh, yeah, you can see this is the lobby where you con can go up. You can walk under these uh, things through to the park. Um, but then if you step into the exhibition cloud, so to say there is one aisle and to the right and to the left, there are many exhibition spaces. Below this building, there is a lake because uh, in the evening, the light is... Re, uh, uh, the, the water reflects the light to the ceiling and gives a very lively, lively impression. And it serves, because there is wind, the natural cooling of the lobby, which is um, glass and steel. This is a column. And I have to say, when I came and saw these handprints on this column, I was very touched and very excited because that reminds me on a very old and uh, very old cave paintings where the people at this time made the same movement like these guys were doing climbing up on the on the on the bicycle in order to imprint their hands on the column. I liked it very much. Building this was not that easy. But we did it, they did it, very, very clever. But when I saw that, when the people are doing it by hand, yeah, with cranes and things like that, I thought, the building industry is very, very stupid. Why don't we use robots to make it much more faster, easier, and more economic? So if we can do it like that, it's the same costs like a box, a stupid box. And later on, we did it in reality, you will see it later. This building looks different from every side. And you can see that very clearly in this movie. architectural piece by only looking at images. You have to experience the whole thing by walking through. Only by walking through you can uh, feel the space and not only the theory. This is bad. This is the entrance to the exhibitions. Natural light is coming from the from the roof into the uh, into the exhibition space, and this is the point of uh, confluence. Therefore, the museum confluence where the river come together, uh, and this is uh, the reason the, the museum is called Museum de Confluence. 
it's a little bit different to all my friends and colleagues that we we always have ramps and and uh, stairs crossing the the space in order to give the people experience since we are not uh, we couldn't get rid of gravity right now flying through this space we have to walk but that gives you an overview and uh, uh, the, 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 the power of the created space is feelable We are going to China, to Dalian, where we did a big, really big uh, conference center. And while, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, while um, it was created by the main streets of the it's the development of the landscape. It's uh, artificial land here. We put it here on the triangle. It was supposed to be a, a conference center, but later on, the mayor said we we have to implant an opera building as well. So it's not only a um, conference center, but also a cultural center. The 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 Plus minus zero level is for exhibition spaces. On the first floor, we have the uh, conference uh, rooms and the entrance to the opera. It has, because of many reasons, one reason, of course, is the energy reason. It has natural light from the ceiling which uh, avoids um, avoids exhausted to be exhausted by the conference uh, participants um, and it gives the whole atmosphere uh, the, the, the whole building a, a very special atmosphere you can see the conference spaces and then in the middle there is the big opera which has a backstage area on the other side which can be used as conference hall as a big conference hall also the same you can see how we worked on that the yellow in the middle this this is the circulation the yellow are the conference spaces and this is the opera building this is the skin. Uh, it's basically an energy skin. And since we had to, uh, the, we had the, the whole thing finished, the planning was finished for the conference. Um, all, um, but then we have, uh, when we had to implant the opera building, we had to push the, uh, the conference halls to the outside, and this is a study how we can create a, a facade. And we, these are the, uh, the plans. Here you can see the, the public space between the conference halls, the blue. And yeah, this is the main issue of an architect to do plans. And this is the opera building in the middle of the of the whole building, and we pushed out the conference halls. The opera, uh, the, the the arena, the opera was very complicated because they wanted to have natural sound and um, and artificial sound, and all these things from the inside. Um, the elements of the inside were uh, uh, support the acoustic issue of the opera building. Here you can see the, the the facade, which I would 
like to call um, um, energy facade because it leads uh, the wind through the building in the summertime in order to cool it, uh, to, to shade the inside from the sun and give uh, the, the, uh, the people natural light as well. You can see the black box would cost a lot of energy. What we did, a glass box basically uh, with louvers. And uh, a lot of energy elements were implanted in this uh, building, wind, sun, uh, 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 floor heating, and, and so forth. And every, every special thing like shading or the wind has a different facade, which makes the whole thing very lively, I have to say. It's not a stupid box. It's very lively. And here you can see that this is the opera building. It's big like the Viennese opera <laughs> in middle of a building. The building is for six to 8,000 people. So it's a little city, I have to say. And you can see the, the dimension, not that small. And bridges and ramps, like always. And this is the inside of the opera building. And all the elements are for acoustic reasons. The opening, <laughs> the architect in the middle of this, the, the hostesses, which are next to me, there were 32 politicians, yeah, cutting their rope <laughs> with their scissors. The other big project is Mokape. Mokape is um, uh, in Shenzhen, um, and there are two museums. This is the architectural museum, city planning museum, like they call it. And this is the museum for modern art. The entrance is directed to the subway station. So if you come from the subway station, you see the inviting entrance. This is the, the program model for planning exhibition platforms. It re, it's a reference to the falling water of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. This is an open plaza, public plaza entrance, and this is the exhibition box for modern art. Here the model. And uh, uh, this would have been the maximum volume. This is the city planning uh, consideration. We turned it a little bit. The base stays like that, but it's turned in order to get the entrance directed to the subway station. Then we made because of the Feng Shui, they ask us to make it round, make the, the whole thing round, because this is where the dragon flies through, this is the uh, big uh, building. And then we started to think about how we can create a three-dimensional um, um, museum. This is what we started since we started to do architecture. It's not only uh, to see a sculpture, a painting uh, straightforward, but from top and from below, it's also very impressive to study that. So we call it three-dimensional Chinese garden, and this is the result. In the middle, we designed um, a, a tea house or information cloud, because people are going there in order to get to know what, uh, what's going on in the museum. And this is one of my favorite sculpture of Brancusch. Uh, we developed from there, we developed a special form, and this is how we did it. Yeah, you can see uh, ramps and stairs and going up. This is where the people come. What I like is to see this. This guy is washing his motorcycle <laughs> in the lake in front of this big museum. This is the entrance uh, before it was opened there. It changed, uh, the facade changed, of course, because uh, this is the north side. We opened it up. The south side is more close. This is the north side. Natural light, of course. 
beautiful sculptured way. This is the entrance. Actually, if you can see me, can you see me? Yes. Yeah, this is where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's me, yeah? To give the lecture, yeah. And uh, directly from China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, directly in China, yeah. And this is the uh, this is the exhibition space, enormous, large. I show you some impressions of the the information cloud, and the the space which is uh, you can conquer if you go to the museum. Yeah, this is what I said. It, it's a reference to Frank Lloyd Wright, falling water, bridges, stairs, exhibition space, of course. As you can see, you can cross the whole thing. And every point you can look down and get an overview. The dynamic of the movement is transported. <laughs> yeah transports the dynamic uh, these stairs and, and, and bridges transports the dynamic of the space you can see how big it is it's enormous and this is the architect explaining the cultural minister of uh, shenzhen what's going on in this building <laughs> yeah, to build it we made an offer to these guys to make the whole thing the cloud with robots. The building industry wouldn't be so stubborn. Uh, we can build much more fantastic uh, uh, spaces and archi architecture uh, to the same price uh, like we uh, have now for stupid boxes. Sooner or later, this is the building method we, we have to build. It. But, on the other hand, this is our office <laughs> right now. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it will look like that uh, in the future. Hopefully not. So this is a short um, Ausblick view to the future. A winning entry for a science uh, and technology museum in Xingtai. Uh, 
the whole exhibition space is lifted up between the bays and this exhibition space there is a, a public park a green park uh, and wind towers which are cleaning the dirty air into a clean um, uh, uh, changing the dirty air into clean air uh, supporting this climate um, of the park. In the base, uh, in, so to say, in this plinth, there are supporting uh, elements like lecture halls, study rooms, and so forth. And up in the cloud, in the roof, in the big roof, there is uh, there is the exhibition um, where the Chinese uh, proudly present their technology success in. In the, in the past, in the present, and hopefully in the future. As you can, as you can see here, these two uh, wind towers, and uh, the air is blown into this green park area. These are the wind towers. This is the... the in the plinth, auditoriums, planetariums, and things like that. This is the exhibition in the in the roof, the exhibition space. You can see all the uh, newest technology. This is another another uh, project we are working on. It's a combination of a conference center, a finance forum, apartments hotels and leisure uh, facilities. And you remember that I like the leaping whale. And in this case, the wheel is jumping out of the building in the swimming pool below. Another uh, science and technology centrum in Kumshan is here, but we are uh, uh, committed to uh, uh, bring an image of the further development uh, for a mixed-use city district, so to say. This is the technology museum, these are high-rises, almost glass. This is techn technology thing, a museum. And now I'm uh, talking about the natural and artificial intelligence. A friend of mine, a very, very important uh, brain scientist. He's research, res uh, researching our brain since years. And a very, uh, a great influencer of this thinking. At his lecture, he showed this image, and I will repeat what he said. He said, this is the biggest computer you can imagine, 200 meter long. And this is a fly. The solution, the brain of the fly, has to bring into milliseconds in order to survive from this speed and the so possibility of, solution, of uh, solutions, this computer 
can only dream of. So that means it will take a long time till we are not, not close, but a little bit closer to the brain of uh, th this artificial intelligence will uh, go for the brain uh, of the fly. So, like always, we are working with all the tools we can get. And this is the moment you can see on the black spots in the design process and the development process of the whole project. We implant the artificial intelligence we developed for it. All our buildings, you saw it in the five minutes at the very beginning, all these buildings where the computer have to learn. And he did it. And then, this is a real, a real project. This is a, a, a mixed use center. This is the the space program. And then we overlaid these simple boxes with our, all our knowledge of facades and ground plans and so forth. So if I show you the movie right now, I have to remind you, these are the next five minutes of our projects. No, let's say it that way. This shows our project in the future, in the next, in, the, in five minutes. So this movie is related to the first movie, but it changes the expression, of course, because the little guy, computer guy, learned a lot, but still, we are in charge to decide what we will take. Since we don't know what music I will like in five, ten years, this is, there is no music at the movie. So, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. It was amazing lecture. Really. And very, very inspiring. So thanks uh, a lot for sharing uh, all uh, these uh, great projects with us. We encourage all the people to ask questions. So if you have some questions to our guests, please uh, write it in comments. Uh, we will ask uh, all of them to, to Mr. Wolf Briggs. Um, but uh, I would like to start with uh, my question. Because, I cannot uh, hear you. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, can you hear me better yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, now it's good. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Um, I would like to ask you if, um, because you showed us a lot of projects, um, but sometimes you also showed us some uh, sketches. Uh, during the lecture you showed us how you are working on it with uh, a sheet of paper. Uh, so I would like to ask what tools are you using during uh, your work, during your uh, process of design? Uh, what, what tool? I'm sketching. Okay, but uh, then when I'm, you... I'm working a little bit on the model as well, like in old times. Uh, what, uh, what else what do you want to know? A scanner, a plotter, a 3D plotter, a fraser? What else? A pen? <laughs> yeah, okay, but it's really difficult. I'm to not talking at the computer programs because this is not a, a shop discussion. Yeah? Okay. But uh, what do you think about architectural education? Uh, what do you think it should lo look like? Uh, what I say, what, uh, what I, I said, to the very beginning, yeah, this is we are on a uncertain ground, the old structures are going down, and we have the chance, the young people now have the chance by investigate and experiment with everything. 
they have the chance to influence the upcoming new uh, structures. Uh, but I warn the young people to go back to their old medieval times to create new structures. That would prohibit a real good development in terms of everything. Is that understandable? Yes. Okay, we received the first questions from uh, from our from, from our viewers. I want to see you, uh, but I cannot. How do I get back? Perhaps you have to stop sharing the screen, and then uh, you will see us. I think. Uh, yeah. I will. I will get it sooner or later. Yeah, I stop sharing the screen. Yeah, here you are. <laughs> Perfect. So Hello. that's great that it works. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have the first question, and um, perhaps um, it's a little bit uh, funny, but uh, our viewer asks, Mr. Prix, have you built your Babel Tower yet? Um, I'm almost. I have almost finished it. <laughs> <laughs> If we can get rid of the gravity, then we can finish it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, next question. Uh, do you think that our habitats will be in a different scale in the future? Habitat means what? Mm, housing estates, like places where people are you living. Mean, uh, you mean the cities? But not only cities, because uh, also uh, a few years ago, Foster and Partners presented a project on Mars, a project of a uh, living habitat on Mars. So also in a bigger scale than uh, only uh, Earth uh, cities. I have a friend who traveled a lot and he is concerned with um, habitats in the space the moon and things like that and he said he found an area in Siberia uh, which uh, is very similar to the dead landscape of Mars and moon and he said after three days he is he has the feeling he will be crazy if he stays one day longer because Everything is dead. And I have to say, all these habitats uh, the architects are designing are ruled by the technology of the space, uh, the, the space adventure. So 75 of the percent of the, the space is only instruments. So good luck for everyone who is going to the Mars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, we are delegating. This is what um, what I always say. We are delegating lifeliness to machines, and if you the society which is doing that has implanted a death wish. Yeah, get rid of lifeliness means get rid of life means being dead. And uh, I like to go to the space and the, 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 the moon adventure and everything is very, very important to do so. But dreaming of um, uh, living on the Mars, yeah, it's okay, they should dream. But I think we have to solve the problems here first. And all these experiments they are doing could help us to do so. I don't want to go to the Mars. I want to uh, 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 travel around the, the Earth, yeah? The blue planet is great. But I'm not eager to go to the moon either. Yeah. The, the Earth is our world, so it's the best place for us. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. And, uh, you, 
dreaming from uh, living on the Mars is escaping from the problems we have here. We can learn a, a lot of uh, the techniques uh, from the outer space, but we have to solve the problem here first. I'm too old <laughs> going there. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, education on the process of convincing a client that using robots costs as much as building stupid boxes. Construction work is indeed stubborn. How do you manage to negotiate? Uh, we were, uh, to say uh, uh, the truth, we were not successful uh, with this uh, robot uh, uh, proposal because uh, the, the other company who was building the, 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 uh, this cloud said that we um, are connected with this robot company and therefore uh, there is no chance that we can do it. So this was a political uh, decision. But sooner or later we will have it. Yeah? And the problem will be what should we do with the workers who are working on the building site right now. So we have to educate them in a different way. This is, but this is not uh, for us architects, this is the, the politicians should think about that. Education is a real big issue in our society right now not only in architecture. Okay, guys, uh, it was a long lecture, I'm tired. Um, yeah, we, we understand. So maybe the, the last question, uh, if it's very... Um, uh, one second, please. Okay, uh, what advice on being better architect would you give to students and young architects? <laughs> this is the question you asked me last time, yeah? Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe in the end, this lecture... <laughs> yeah, but now it's uh, written by one of our advice. Uh, yeah. Don't think too much about architecture. Okay, <laughs> thank you very well, much. That, uh, I was, uh, was once visiting Louis Kahn, and he was not talking about architecture, he was talking about light. The light, how the light changes spaces. This is the way we should think about architecture. Yeah, that's great. Also, now I see that one of our viewers wrote that if deep Himmelblau is the future, why do we need space allocation programs anymore? So it's uh, according uh, to, to, to the previous question. Yeah, <laughs> this is like on Mars, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. No, it's a kind of polemic as well, yeah? They should understand, the audience should understand that deep Himmelblau is just a research how we can use machines in order to make things better. What I say, I'm very delighted to work with uh, computers in order to figure out uh, the deformation of a building by the wind. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is a very good tool. To, to in order to uh, to create new facades and things like that, that's perfect. But as a designing uh, object, a computer is is just a, like a hammer or a nail. Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you to you. It was thank a great you. pleasure to to discuss all these topics with you. Uh, so thanks a lot for making time uh, for um, coming here to uh, give a lecture for us. Uh, it was very inspiring. Uh, so for us, it was also uh, the first uh, YouTube lecture. So uh, thank you. Thanks to all our viewers for your understanding if uh, there were any technical problems. 
And plus again, uh, thank you very much to you, Mr. Prix, uh, because it was really, really a great lecture. It was great to hear about your uh, about your amazing works and uh, to have the possibility to meet you.